My name is Michaela Aliifua, and I own a small indigenous business named AB Daisy Designs. I create custom beaded pet collars. So after I launched, I started to grow a following, and now I wanted to expand it from being a hobby into a full-on business. So now I'm changing the name of my business. You're changing not just the name, but also the logo, the entire branding for what you're doing. <laughs> that must feel like a lot. Yes, it is. It's so overwhelming. So what are your biggest worries as we start this rebranding process? Some of my biggest worries are people not really recognizing my brand anymore. And I would lose some of my clientele. And maybe some people might even think it's a whole new account copying what I'm currently doing. So you don't want to confuse your customers. Yeah, I don't want to confuse them. Designing a rebrand. It can feel overwhelming and complicated. And whether it's for a giant multinational corporation or a one-person shop like Michaela's, the stakes are basically the same. If you get it wrong, your business takes a hit. So let's help Michaela get it right. Today, she'll get a mentor, someone who's been through a similar branding evolution. And then I'll pull in a professional designer who will share some practical design advice to help Michaela and help all of us learn how to think through an effective design rebrand. I'm Koi Vin, Senior Director of Design at Adobe. And this is Wireframe, designed for small business, a special limited series from Adobe Express, a new app that you can use to quickly and easily make standout content from thousands of beautiful templates. So I'm looking at the collars that you make, and they look like really beautiful, meticulously crafted beadwork. Yeah, beadwork is such a huge part of my culture. And my mom is the one who actually taught me how to bead. Each tiny bead is picked up one by one and designed perfectly to create a custom beaded collar. And now, as you said, you think you need a rebrand to turn this hobby into a full-fledged business. Correct. So I started literally out of a shoebox during quarantine. Mm. And I actually really had nothing to do with my time. So it's just like, let's create something. And as I started to create more, people became very interested in my product. Mm -hmm. And as my followers started to grow and people became more interested, it became a little bit overwhelming. And it's just something I never expected to happen. So the name right now is AV Daisy Designs. What's the problem that you see with it? It was just a name that I thought up quickly using both of my grandmother's names. And now I don't really feel like it fits the brand anymore. And I wanted something more specific to beaded pet collars. So what's the new name that you've picked for your business? So the name is Kiki's Collection. And it's actually in honor and in memory of my puppy Kiki. She passed away about now. It's been about a month since she passed. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's been so hard for my husband and I. My husband, he is actually Hawaiian. And the name Keiki means little one or a child. Mm. And my Keiki girl is definitely my little one. I was just like, we need to remember her because she did so much for me. She was there literally every step of the way. So I want to honor this collection in memory of her. Mm -hmm. And I do want to expand not just to beaded pet collars, but to handkerchiefs, to custom leashes, to fabric collars and dog tags and anything in between right. dealing with your precious little one, your cakeies. So let's take a look at the original branding that we're working with, the lilac logo that you created. Can you describe what we see there? So the logo is just something that I threw together and it was done very quickly without really any skills of branding. I just chose the most basic font right. and some stock photos of some daisies. And I didn't get that wow factor that I've always wanted in creating a business. With AV Daisy Designs, when you first look at it, it's just, okay, that's cute. It's, just, it's cute. You called it cute, but there's some meaning here too, right? There's the Navajo symbols and I imagine the daisies have some kind of intention. Yes. Daisy is my paternal grandmother. She was a Navajo sheep herder. My dad always would tell me stories about how she would watch over her sheep and he would compare it to how I watch over my two puppies, Ashki and Keiki. 
and how loving I am with them and comparing it to how loving Grandma Daisy was with her sheep, she would treat her sheep as her own keikis. There's a lot of great stuff to work from here. We've got the new name, the new look. We've got a lot of personal meaning and heritage to draw from as well. Mm -hmm. This rebrand is off to a great start. Awesome. I'm so excited. So I get Michaela's anxiety around rebranding, especially since she's doing it all herself. She wants to appeal to new customers, but she also doesn't want to lose the community that she's already built around AV Daisy Designs. So I found her someone that she can really connect with about these worries. Her name is Deja Fox. Hi, Michaela. Hey, Deja. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I connected Michaela and Deja for a few reasons, but mostly because Deja is a founder herself. Uh, so I have your logo pulled up right now. I'm looking at AV Daisy Designs. She heads an organization called Gen Z Girl Gang, where she and her friends designed their own branding. Gen Z Girl Gang fosters collaboration and mentorship and empowers female content creators. And Deja herself is a powerful activist and a champion of women. If there's anyone who can inspire Michaela to think outside the box when it comes to rebranding her business, it's her. How does it feel to create something and put it out there, put it out in the world, knowing that you're the person that made it? I think that that can be kind of scary. Oh my gosh, it definitely was. I started it on a whim and I had so many dreams and aspirations of how I can create something, Mm -hmm. but I just didn't know where to start. It can be a little nerve wracking, right? I was not immune to that. Certainly not. When you started Gen Z Girl Gang, what was it like coming up with your branding? We did this out of my freshman year dorm, right? Like, oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. So this was just me and my girls. Like my background is as a community organizer. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to experiment with the idea that social media could be used as a community building tool. And part of that experiment was in our branding, right? When we got started, we soft launched an entire month before our launch. And we posted things like our logo, our mission statement, our colors, and let people vote and give us feedback. And so because we had created something with them as a part of the creation process, they were just so much more deeply bought in and have been for years. I see you doing that even in the videos you post where you show the design process of the callers, right? That you're like constantly engaging people in that design process. Yeah. And I would love to hear more about if you have ever rebranded yourself in your business, how did you go about that? The answer is yes, constantly and consistently. When Gen Z Girl Gang had our first logo, we were pretty set on our colors, which are, you know, this like pink, orange, red, kind of wanted like something a little bit groovy, a little bit flowy in terms of font. But the logo that we started with is nowhere near the logo we have now or the branding we have now. But I didn't delete it. Yes. When we think about a rebrand, it can often look like burning it all down and like sweeping it under the rug and pretending like it never happened. Mm -hmm. But I'm a big believer that in a world where everything is documented, right, as the first generation to really grow up with our entire lives online, there's no sense in trying to sweep things under the rug personally, professionally, that it's actually kind of inspiring to be able to see the archive of someone's life and work and see how they've grown and changed Exactly. And, you know, I'm excited to be able to look back at what was AV Daisy Designs and see how it's grown. Mm -hmm. And I think other people will be inspired by that, too. I can see you had a vision when you first started it and how you evolved. And you definitely stayed connected. And even though I'm changing the name, I do definitely want to continue to stay connected to what once was AV Daisy Designs. One of the best things that I can say is like, you don't have to have all the answers because I used to feel like I like needed to know or that once I put something out there, it needed to be fully baked and perfect and it doesn't, Yes, you know? And I think it was a reminder that while I'm an expert in my experience, I don't need to get it right. I can do what is best. Mm -hmm. And as you grow, as your business grows, you get to constantly make those choices. Yeah. And actually, one of the things that I noticed about your logo change is that it no longer has a colored background like mine does now. 
you know, that original logo you saw was kind of just on this like big pink background, Mm -hmm. sort of similar to yours. It was almost like a rectangle. But what we had to create was a logo that could be used anywhere, right? That was like PNG, clear background. So we could stick it on top of a photo for our graduation summit or put it on top of, you know, the header of a letter or put it on a t-shirt right? Yes. That that versatility was also really important. So it's true for you as well. Like this logo is going to be increasingly important in creating that connection between the product and the creator. Yeah. You know, I feel like with like the rebranding and with a new design and a new logo, I think this will be a great jump start. I think people will see this as like, she's all in, you know? I think so too. And it kind of reminds me of something that I learned as it relates to design and particularly as a woman of color, right? I'm also a founder. Yeah. It's just a fact that people like you and I are going to be held to higher standards of professionalism. Definitely. Right. And that in so many ways, design can actually be a tool to combat that. A kind of like fake it till you make it vibe, right? Mm -hmm. That like when people see really clean designs or really put together branding or a seamless site, it signals to them something about professionalism. Like the term you said, she's all in. Exactly. It's just like, this isn't the end. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more to come. And that's what I'm so excited about. Yeah. And I hope that you know that I'm watching, I'm tuned in, I'm supporting, I'll be liking, (laughs) commenting, ordering, and that there's so many people in your corner cheering you on. And you really, you can do this. Oh, I'm so excited. And I want to say ahyahet, which is thank you in Navajo. So ahyahet. Thank you, Deja. Thank you. Talk soon. Deja Fox is a prominent activist, content producer, and founder. I put links to her content in the show notes for this episode. Okay, Michaela, that was a lot. Yes. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like I definitely love that she incorporated the community with redesigning her logo. And that's something I definitely want to incorporate as well. I thought it was also really great what she had to say about the versatility that we need to put into this new logo, putting it onto different backgrounds, making sure it reads in a lot of different contexts. Had you thought about that kind of thing before? Yes, I have. But honestly, I didn't even know where to start. I look back at my logo now and I think, can I even put that big rectangle logo Hmm. onto a shirt? And I feel like that would just maybe be tacky if I were to put that onto something. I definitely want to condense it and make it smaller, but still very visible. Deja's advice seems to have unlocked the confidence that Michaela needs for the path ahead. So now it's time to shape her redesign. And to help with that, I've got designer Carly Ayers waiting in the wings. And if you're keeping track, yes, there are two completely different people on the show this season who happen to share the same name. I've seen a lot of companies, big and small, go through this. So Michaela's in great company. So you've got a lot of experience with rebranding, and I know that you've been through something similar at Google, in fact. That's true. Yeah. Back in 2015, I was freelancing here in New York in Google's Creative Lab, and they were just about to launch their rebrand. There was a lot of fear about what if they couldn't recognize Google, which seems wild to think about now, but it's exactly the same thing we're talking about here today, right? Right. And when we think about creating a logo that carries something forward from the previous brand, the thing that holds it together is this idea of core values, like making sure that even though the new brand is different, it still has some consistent ideas from the previous one. Totally. So again, thinking of Google, such a big part of their brand was being these rule breakers, being really helpful, approachable, almost childlike in some ways. And so there are several elements they carried over. For example, the playfully tilted E and a lot of their brand colors, that primary red, blue, yellow, the dash of green to show that they don't always follow the rules. With, of course, a few changes along the way. Hmm. And Michaela's actually changing the name of her company, right? And Google did something a bit similar. They introduced this new parent company called Alphabet Mm -hmm. that people also needed to recognize and know how it was connected to Google. 
So they needed to bring along some of those core company values to also reflect in both identities. So with Alphabet, they have that red and a similar typeface so that they feel connected. So how does a company figure out what their core values are? There's a lot of different ways to approach it. I think listening to Michaela talk about her brand, it sounds like it's really rooted in so many different aspects of her identity, her relationships, her community. I think looking towards the reason why you started this in the first place is a great place to start. Michaela, I want to ask you how all of this is resonating with you so far. I think what you guys are saying is phenomenal, and I'd love to figure out what my core values are. So let's get started. I have a few different questions I like to ask when I'm kicking off a project like this. One is, if you could describe your company values in three words, what would they be? And this is very hard. So if it takes a moment, totally okay. As for values, you know, so many things come to mind, but values that I have for AV Daisy is putting hard work, passion and positivity into my work. I love it. That was fast. (laughs) That didn't take you long at all. (laughs) And I do want to add one more thing. I guess a value from my background would be hojo, which hojo means balance. It means peace. It means positivity. And within every design that I make, I put hojo into it. That's awesome. I like the ring of that. Okay, Michaela. So when I work with clients, helping them figure out what their brand is, I usually have a few exercises, including a lightning round. Oh, no. So (laughs) what I'm going to do is I'm going to say two words, this or that, and you just pick the one that feels right to you. Okay? Okay. Awesome. So is Keiki's collection warm or cold? Warm. Hard or soft? It's soft. Rich or famous? It is famous. (laughs) Smart or funny? It is so funny. (laughs) Let me get in on this. Paper or plastic? Paper. (laughs) Still or sparkling? Sparkling. Inside or outside? Inside. Loud or quiet? Loud. Against the grain or with the flow? I would say against the grain. Bravo. You did it. 10 out of 10. I was a little nervous, but I'm glad we got through it. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. (laughs) So it's a lot of fun, but this exercise is actually really helpful because it helps you kind of hone in on what those core values are. Perfect. You can also use it as a litmus test, right? So after you design the new logo, you go back through these. You're like, okay, is this still or sparkling? And if it feels sparkling, you know you're a little closer to where you want to be. Perfect. I love that. So think of this exercise we just did. When you look at your existing brand, what elements are already there and and what might you want to start bringing into it? With one of my core values being hojo, when I think of that, I think of the Navajo basket design. And the Navajo basket design is a very popular design. And there's the stepping stones that are within the basket and it's in a circular motion, which is very similar to the yin yang, which also means you have the positive and you have the negative and without each other, there's no balance. And that's already in your logo right now, right? I do have something similar. Yes, that is just a very, I would say a generic Navajo symbol, but I do want to incorporate the Navajo basket and I can't wait to express that in my logo. I can't wait to see it. All right, so let's link up some of your other design elements with some of the values that we've been talking about. Looking at the color that you've got now, this purple color, is that something you also want to bring forward? The purple color, it's definitely like a family symbol as a symbol of where my business derives from, is from the love of my mother, from the love of my sister, from my grandmother's, is that purple color. Okay. One last thought is you can't bring it all with you. So some of these things, you might have to edit out. You might have to leave them behind. You know, and that's okay. I think that's the process of moving forward and expanding not only my small business, but expanding my creativity and seeing what I can and what I can't take with me. I love it. One last thing. Something I heard from your conversation with Deja that I really loved was the idea of engaging your community, right? Mm -hmm. And when you engage people in your process, they tend to care a lot more about the end result. Yes. One of the dangers, though, 
internet's full of people. They all have a lot of opinions. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So make sure whatever you do is aligned to those core values. You should be good. Godspeed. Thank you, Carly. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Carly. <laughs> so, Michaela, it sounds to me like there's a lot from the old design that you want to bring forward. But as Carly said, you can't bring it all with you. You know, something that I want to leave behind is having like the colored background and the rectangle shape of my logo. And I want to make it more versatile where I can put it on, you know, different things. So what about engaging the community in the rebrand like Deja suggested? Yeah, I really like Deja's idea. So when I post, I always get a great response and great feedback, just like as if they were my friends. And so what I plan on doing is creating stories on my Instagram and polls and really getting their feedback. Okay, great. So now I'm going to challenge you. Take the next week to get started, and then let's see how much progress you can make. Yeah? Yeah, I can't wait to show you. With Michaela off tackling her redesign, let's review the advice that we heard about rebranding a business. One. Defining your company's core values before starting a rebrand really ensures that your new design stays true to what your customers love about your business. Two, rebranding is part of your business's evolution. Keeping elements of your old design, even if it's just in your social feed, can help root customers in where you've been and inspire them with how you've grown. And three, engaging your community in the design process can lead to a deeper, longer-term connection with your brand. It can really help retain the customers you already have as your business evolves. Above all, though, stick to those core values as the ideas roll in. After all, this is your business, and you get the final say on your design. A week after we spoke, I heard from Michaela. She had been busy with her Instagram account, engaging with her customers and her community. Hey friends, it's Michaela here, and I'm really excited to share this new rebranding process with you all. So I need your help. What defined AV Daisy design? Another question. What shade of purple should the new logo Should I stick have? with the original lilac shade? Thank you all for your help. She also sent us this message about how her design efforts were paying off. So I have been playing around and I found myself reflecting back on the core values that we talked about. Hojo being one of them. And now I'm seeing it as my number one core value. I plan on using a Navajo basket and using the words made with love in Hojo underneath the basket. And I've actually had the idea to make it look like I have Keiki's collection woven into the Navajo basket. And honestly, I'm so stoked to see how this new logo looks. And I've gotten a pretty great response back from past customers and future customers. They've been actually DMing me and leaving such sweet notes. My phone has honestly been blowing up and I'm actually really excited to share more of what Keiki's collection has to offer. Michaela's experience reinforces what we've been hearing all season. Everyone has the ability to design all on their own with a little help and the right tools. Her story brings us to the end of the season of Wireframe. Over the past six episodes, you've heard some terrific advice that will hopefully boost your confidence as you embark on your own design journey. A journey made even easier with Adobe Express. Head to adobe.com slash express and give it a try. Wireframe is produced by Pippa Johnstone, Rematola Sheikh, Christy Chan, Sarah Mian Sirk, Dominic Gerard, and me, with support from Lindsay Monroe, Amy Goldstein, and Leah Walker at Adobe. I'm Koi Vin, and this is Wireframe, designed for small business, a limited series from Adobe Express. <laughs> <laughs>